So I want to really talk to you guys today about something that I was very naive about when I first started trading and day trading. You know, I was following Timothy Sykes and I was like, hey, look at these parabolic movers, right? And then Ross Cameron too, with these low float runners and they're parabolic, right? But where is that gonna come from? That's gonna come many times from the shorts getting squeezed. In other words, they are in their short position and they are going to feel the pressure to cover because the demand for the stock is driving the price up. And one of the ways you can look at the most current information of how many shares have been shorted to me is the short volume. You know, I'll give you a disclaimer that I did have my series seven 20 years ago now, um, but it is no longer current. So all this information is my personal opinion, but very relevant I find in trading. Thank you, Bat Scientist. Happy Valentine's Day to you too. A little uh, Valentine's Day gift for everybody in the market. So I'm sure you guys have heard about short interests, right? So you know that there is the short interest that is reported, but this is reported, as it says, by FINRA by 6 p.m. on the second business day after reporting the settlement date. So if you had the settlement date, I totally misspelled settlement there, just saw that, um, of today, the 14th, then they are required to report it by the 19th. So if we go backwards a little bit, so settlement date for a stock is trade date plus two days, right? So you're going to see that that is already three days after the event has occurred, and then you have another two days in which they have to report it. So we're now five days after the actual trade date, right? And then it goes to the exchanges on the 26th and is released out to the public. So if we look at it on the settlement date of the 14th, subtract the settlement date minus two more days, right? So we're looking that 14th, 13th, 12th, the trade likely happened on the 10th, right? Uh, well, 12th. So that's on the 12th, and now it's getting reported to the exchanges on the 26th. And that's what's released as the short interest. So that is really old short data. Now there is the more current short data, which is what I really like to look at and what I use in my daily watch list, which if you guys have not checked out Ticker Talker, I do have my watch list on Ticker Talker, and I do it live every morning from about 8.15 till nine o'clock. I'm on there explaining it all, walking you guys through it if you guys have any interest. Uh, so what I use is the short volume right here. Now this is reported to FINRA at the end of each trading day. Now is that not all of them are required to report it to FINRA, so it might be a little low, if anything, on the short interest, but, excuse me, short volume. Um, but these are going to be the self-regulatory organizations that report it daily to increase the short transparency. And they are also reported by 6 p.m. as well. And it's all fully accessible. I can put the link actually down below if you really wanted to get that data yourself. But the best place that I have found to find this data is actually shortvolumes.com. So let me go into a little bit more. I saw this Tesla squeeze coming. It's pretty awesome. So right here, hopefully this is not too blurred for you guys and you guys can see it fairly well. Um, so we've got the data right here from December 5th to December 18th. And I also have the stock chart of Tesla daily chart behind, right? So it looks like it's really overextended and yet Right, I'm on the 19th or the next trading day, I had it on my watch list, obviously, because these are the levels right here. And you can see, look at this 60% short volume. So out of 8.9 million, 5.3 million was short. So when we go back and we start looking at it, 59.52, 58%. This is five, the past five days was 59%. The past 10 days was 58%. The past 20 days, 
and then the last 50 days from this is all December 18th that I or the next trading day after the 18th because this ha includes the 18th so it's obviously the next trading day that it was 54% short volume for 50 trading days that's pretty much right so then when we move forward what happened so we're looking we're right here around December 18th right so it goes up pulls back a little bit up again and these shorts become irrational right the market starts excuse me Tesla starts to squeeze them and you can see that the shorts had just kept piling in they were already at 50 days over 50 percent short for the volume every single day so everyone is trying to pick the top right and that's not necessarily a good place you want to be we all want to have a great trade and if anybody has short as a stock you know that there can be great returns to the downside when you go short but the timing is essential right you want to get in up here hindsight's 2020 of course but you want to get in up here when it looks like there's exhaustion from the top you start to see the sellers coming in yes there was a little bit of a run down here so if it goes back above there don't be stubborn look that was around 550 that was up another $400 right there so unfortunately there was a hedge fund that also went out of business and I also threw up the Volkswagen um, chart here as well that I found from this blog that hey Volkswagen had the same scenario right massive spike up and then came back down right two months later almost it was almost back down at the same price really six months later it was back down at the same price so for people that might be patient yes this could go ahead and it could come back down um, but it is still an upward trend at the moment so that trend is not broken now I got curious right I started to do research I started to say hey what is going on with the indexes right we had that massive week where we had a lot of consolidation of of uh, positioning on the spy so then I thought hey let me go back and look so this is yesterday's I didn't put the date on it but this is February 14th 2020 and you can start to see yesterday for the spy we had 50% short volume for QQQ 53% for IWM the over 60% are in red the over 50% are in bold so we have IWM the Russell 2000 66% short Dow Jones 61% short Apple 54% oh Microsoft that should not be bold and that should not be bold right there sorry guys the 3732 for Microsoft and Amazon 54% for Google 59% for Facebook 51% for Nvidia I feel bad for those guys ouch with the gap up today 62% short for Netflix and Comcast 54% so out of one two three out of the four indexes more bearish by the market right because this is what's been reported and then out of the top one two three four five six seven eight nine nine stocks roughly seven out of nine people think that this is going to go down right because they've started to short it so this is interesting because you're starting to see that accumulation look when we go back to the last 50 days of the spy we're at 54 percent last 50 days on QQQ 56 percent but those people might be getting stubborn it might be a melt up or a short squeeze scenario on the markets before we have a crash down um, we can see that with the Russell 2000 really over the last 20 days we're already up over 60 percent Netflix as well up over 60 percent and I did pick Apple Microsoft Amazon Google Facebook Nvidia Netflix and Comcast because they are our large players in both S&P and QQQ so I was looking for the large percentage holders of those indexes to see hey what's going on with these indexes and what's going on you know we do have the coronavirus very current information going on we just had the Fed announce that this could affect the US first quarter earnings now that might not have already been priced in to the market as of yet because they were saying no everything's okay no everything's okay so 
we might see if we continue to push higher that all of these shorts that were short over the last 20 days are starting to really get squeezed and it could have a higher rate of increase because those shorts are starting to really feel the pain. Let's go ahead and look at the indexes, right? So pull up SPY right here. Well, actually, I'll do two charts. And we'll put the SPY daily over here. Okay, so you can see I just have this, this blue line here is the top of this um, consolidation area of positioning right here. So when we broke down, yes, it went down. We hit the 50 simple moving average. We bounced up and then we broke up and look, it acted as support back here on the 7th of February. Now it looks potentially like we've had a bit more of positioning up here. Let's go ahead and draw that. It's running a little slow because I have a lot of stuff open on my computer. Right, so we've got this block again. So hey, if we go up above, we're likely gonna be bullish on the market, in my opinion. You know, everybody's saying, hey, the coronavirus, the coronavirus, it's worse than expected. The World Health Organization is coming along and they are going to actually go and see what's going on in China. They weren't really allowed there before. So that is happening this weekend. So this could be consolidation again, like this week, right? This was the 24th. I believe that was a Friday. Yeah, that was a Friday right there. So potentially this could happen if we were to break down potentially next week, or maybe they're going to go ahead and create uh, another big position and maybe they're not done. Uh, you know, the really big guys that can control, control this market. Right now, we don't really have a lot of volume. We have, what, two and a half hours left in the market for the day. And it's lower than normal volume right here. We had a bit higher volume here, but overall, as we're going up, the, price, the volume is dropping here. Whereas back here, right, we had price increasing and volume was increasing, 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 a little bit of a lull right here, a little bit lower, and then boom, big drop off, big volume. Again, volume came back in when we hit the 50 simple moving average as support. Um, I also drew a trend line on QQQ, which I'm getting into my CMT training and absolutely loving it. So we've got it right here. Right, so it's a pretty steep rate that we've gone up. So potentially we've had a bit of short squeezing already going on with QQQ, right? And we are right at the cusp of it. Came down and it touched that trend line. When we back it out again, when it came down, it broke right back up, came down right back up, and now we're down at the bottom of it. So. We will see, are we going to close? I did put it out there on Twitter. I said, hey, if we close below 233.75, we might just be in a trend change for QQQ. Um, and let's look at Apple as well. Where are you guys from? Where are you guys joining me from? I'm up in cold Montreal right now, right? So I did draw a bit of a wedge here, right? And we've had two days, it looks like, of consolidation, right? It came up, hit the top of that line. Look at how many times, once, twice, three, four, five, they couldn't hold it above. It up, opened and closed and then proceeded to come right back down. Um, and then here as well, and here. So it, this trend line has been holding pretty strong. And as well, down below here, so we came down below it, also hit the averages and came back up. Again, not the biggest volume today. Maybe the really big guys have already left. They've already made their positions. We had this nice bullish engulfing and then a bit of a pullback and then up and back down. 
So where are we going to go? Minnesota? Hi Mike, how's the Minnesota weather? You guys got pummeled with snow over the last week? We got a nice 18 inches up here. So right now, Apple is such a large holding um, in the indexes. I actually just updated SPY. So we've got, this is the top 30 holdings of the SPY, right? And a lot of them are red on the day. We're down 20 cents. Uh, obviously, these are just the indexes right here, but Microsoft is really holding it up right now. However, Microsoft also just lost that contract. So yes, it's up on the day. We're in between the moving averages. You know, it looks like a break below potentially 182, 181.80. We could be really going in and making a bit of a steep downturn here. Um, because we're starting to see that we are broken below the fastest moving average, are we going to break below the second one as well and go on down and test the averages on the way down? Um, I really like looking at the, well, look at that. We've hit the 200 simple moving average on the 45 minute chart. So we've stalled out a bit, right? It's gone a little sideways here over the past three days, which you can also see on the bigger chart on the right. So. Looking at all of this, I'm not convinced that we are completely bullish. I'm feeling more bearish on the market. However, we do have all of that short volume that is going on in the market, which could, like Tesla, create an ultimate short squeeze on the indexes, even though potentially, fundamentally, these stocks should be going down. However, the market is irrational. If people start to get squeezed, they might really get their butts handed to them. So that's nice that you don't have a lot of snow, Mike. Um, so we also see that with Amazon, right? Amazon had, look at this. We had one, two, day, really, it looks like we've broken a nice support area right here. 21.38, right? Pull it up over here. I'll go ahead and do this and I'll lock the symbols the same. This is old. Right? So we've broken this area right here, 2138, where we had a nice bullish bounce up and it had acted as support here, 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 and today we're breaking down. Right? So we've got Apple. Let's look at, we might looked at Microsoft as well. Let's look at Facebook, right? What's Facebook looking like? Is it slowly, Facebook's sort of all over the place right at the moment. Look at that, it's a big mess. I would say really longer term, we're trading in between this range right here, right? Support, resistance, resistance, resistance. So we would need it to really break down between 205, you can see how it consolidated up here as well back in January when we had that massive downturn. Go ahead and remove those. Right? So this area, it's kind of like a big head and shoulders. We've got a shoulder head and it bounced up a little bit more. And Google. I have one of these homes and they are like the little pucks. So I just updated my internet. And so when I say the word, it tries to connect. But look at this over here. You can see, right? Look at this. Do you think this is positioning for a bigger move? Right there. All of this range of candlesticks, right? When your brain starts to see, all right, this price action is stalling. Yes, there's great intraday range on it, $14. It's not that much for a $150, excuse me, $1,500 stock. But when we start to see that a lot of these big players are having this happen, that they're stalling a bit. This is a bit of a W here with Visa. But look can't break out and hold up above this level, the prior high for now. We still have two hours left in the market. So I'm not saying, look at Bank of America right here. 
I like to look at the 45 minute back data bit because you can see that consolidation, right? Maybe even down a little bit further, came down here. Right, so we have this resistance right here, a range. Yep, they took it up and they brought it right back down in. So they are positioning potentially for how many days now, right? Before they wanna make a big move. So this week I've been more just analyzing the market because it's feeling shaky to me and there's no confirmation for me. We've got all this impending news about debt, news about credit, uh, like consumer credit, and the coronavirus, which is likely going to impact first quarter earnings because everything is halted. Uh, you know, there were airplanes that were halted in Heathrow this morning and cruise ships too. My parents were considering going on a cruise. My dad's a doctor. He said, nope, until this virus is done, I don't wanna go and lock us up on a cruise ship because what happens if somebody on that cruise ship has it and it's highly contagious like the common cold right however it's more deadly than the common cold so do you guys have anything you want to look at otherwise i'm going to wrap it up i've got to go and pick up my little one from school and go and celebrate valentine's day with her now uh, let's go and look at gold Let's look at GDX, right? Now GDX might be just the opposite, right? So we have this range on GDX, I would say really upside would be above, in my opinion, 2860. Right? We also have a bit of a trend line there. So we are up above that trend line. And we're following the averages up. We're following that 50 simple moving average up. But it's been range bound really since February 5th. Ah, oh, thank you. Is it Moises? Thank you. So, you know, I... In my opinion, I think that there might be some wealth going into gold. This is the CFD on gold. But you can see gold is going up overall. I want to look at Barrick Gold. Oh, I have it stuck on Arca, that's why. So here we go. Barrick Gold is blasting off at the moment, right? But when we look back here, over on the left, I don't know why it's not showing up when I move this. The drawings, you can see that it was really on the daily chart right here, a high range of 1868 and a low right here of 1790. Potentially how many days? One, two, three, actually just look at this way, 21st of January through until the 12th of February. Yes, they had earnings. However, it's also in the gold sector. Gold sector overall seems to have had potentially transfer of wealth as well as silver, right? So silver, when we back it out, just looking at, just if you almost squint your eyes, you can see it more. It's like those magic eye books. So we have the range over here. This is old, right? We have this range a potential positioning that it's trading. So potential breakout to the upside of 1666. However, we also have this downward trend line, right? So I would wanna see confirmation if it were to break out today above 1684 or maybe 1680 over the next week, right? Because I wanna see that trend line broken where it's constantly been rejected and all of this potential consolidation of positioning because we're starting to see the averages curl up. We have the 50 simple moving average curling up over the slower moving averages, the 90, the 100, and the 120. 
So just my thoughts on the market going into this long holiday weekend. So make sure you guys are prepared. You know the market is closed on Monday. And I have an awesome video coming out as well from Mish Snyder. She is one of the speakers at the Modern Trader Summit. And if you guys have the chance, I would love to see you there. And if you guys do not already follow me on YouTube, please like and subscribe. And also turn on the notifications so you get a cool little alert and an email once I go live. All right, guys. Have a great weekend. Enjoy it. Be safe with friends and family. Happy Valentine's Day to all of you. And Carpe Profit, one trade at a time. Bye. Thanks.